Hi, I'm going to show you how you can take a blank ATmega 328P chip and burn the Arduino bootloader onto it so that you can make your own uh, bare bones Arduino. Um, I had some issues getting this to work initially. Um, it's working really well now. Uh, so I just thought I'd make a quick little video to share my experience and hopefully uh, help someone else out if they're having an issue. Uh, the circuit I should say this is the little board that I came up with that makes it really slick uh, and it uses uh, an Arduino uh, Pro Mini uh, clone. Uh, this one's a 3.3 volt uh, version uh, running 8 megahertz and uh, that's what I wanted the chip to be as well so it was just kind of a simple project here to just kind of put those two together. Um, this is the uh, basic uh, schematic of how I put my board together. This all pretty much came from the Arduino website. Uh, but they didn't show any examples using the Pro Mini, so I built one, so I just thought I would quickly uh, post that. Um, I'll have this in the uh, notes in the video um, on an instructable site, uh, so you can go ahead and uh, get a copy of that. Uh, so the first step is just go into the Arduino uh, IDE, and uh, you're just going to go uh, under the example uh, sketches. Uh, just load up the Arduino um, ISP um, example, and uh, that's what I got here in the background. I didn't have to modify that in any way, that's just the stock example. Uh, just go ahead, plug in your FTI programmer, or whatever program you're using. Um, I have that plugged in. Um, it's best to remove the uh, Pro Mini uh, from the board here when you go to uh, install this sketch, uh, just so you don't have any conflicts here. Uh, so anyway, there's the, uh, there's the board. Uh, just go under your uh, tools, uh, select uh, the correct board, which we have in here, and then go ahead and select the uh, processor and the port and that's all correct and so now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to upload uh, that sketch so while that is uploading here it'll take just a second okay that's finished uploading uh, we can now just go ahead and take this little board and we can just plug it right in here on the sockets All right, that's in. And uh, now we're gonna take our, uh, our blank chip and uh, we're just gonna pop that in here to the uh, little socket. As I try to do this one-handed with the phone in my hand. All right, so we have the uh, blank chip inserted into uh, the programming socket and uh, we got the uh, Arduino ISP example already installed on the Arduino Pro Mini clone. And uh, now all we have to do is go back into the tools menu and uh, select the board that we want the chip to be once it's done being burned. I want the actual Arduino Pro or Pro Mini board, so that's already selected, which is, uh, which is fine. I want the 328, 3.3 volt version at eight megahertz. And uh, I did put in an eight megahertz crystal. I know there's an internal one, but um, I went ahead and added one. Um, you can substitute whatever crystal you'd want, more than likely probably the 16 megahertz model. But um, anyway, we have that selected. Um, the other important thing here is under the programmer, you want to make sure that you select Arduino as ISP, which is selected. And now we can go ahead and click Burn Bootloader. You can see down here in the status lights, you're going to see those blinking. Um, if there's any errors, the red light will come on. All right, so that is complete. We can see here at the bottom that it's done burning the bootloader. Um, I initially had a lot of problems trying to get this step to work when I was using one of the Arduino Uno R3 boards. Um, I ended up building this uh, circuit and trying it out with a uh, Dumanolve board, and that worked. Uh, but I did have to insert a 10 micro uh, ferret capacitor between the uh, reset and the ground. Um, I ended up putting a, a socket on this uh, so I can insert the capacitor. Um, it hasn't been necessary on this board, uh, but I left it in there so that I can add it if I need it. Um, if you do add that, make sure that you upload the sketch first onto the Pro Mini or whatever board you're using without the capacitor, or else it won't, uh, it won't upload the sketch. Once you have that sketch installed, uh, now you can go and insert that capacitor if you need it. Um, and then you can go ahead and run that programming step that we just just did. Um, so at this point, the bootloader is installed. 
Uh, in order to test it, what I did is I created some more uh, header pins here so that we can connect directly to the, uh, the board. Um, I have the 22 picofarad capacitors and the crystal installed. Um, and so this, this can pretty much run on its own, but we're gonna go and test it here once with a basic blink sketch. All right, so we have the header cable moved over. It's now plugged into the board. So the bootloader's installed, but there's, there's nothing on here yet. So we're just gonna go in and use just a real basic example sketch. Uh, we'll use the blink sketch. Um, the only thing we're gonna need to do is modify the um, output pins. Um, I installed an LED light. It's going to be on pin 8, um, just to test this to make sure that the bootloader was in fact um, burned correctly. I tried using OptiBoot and it kept up, it kept saying that everything was correct, um, but when I went to put the board into my, uh, the chip into my bare bones board, it actually didn't work. So I just thought this was kind of a nice extra little step just to verify everything was working. So we'll go ahead and we'll compile this. All right, and we're going to go ahead and run it. I will let you see the board here once as I click on it. So here we go with the uh, upload. There we go, and it's blinking away. So we have the bootloader installed and the chip is working. And that's it.